Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Press Play Lifestyle Inspired Podcast, where we do interviews with interesting and inspiring people like our new friend Maxwell here. For our listeners, that's you, to find the resources, tools, and support you need to be your best inspired selves. How are you doing today, Maxwell? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm I'm doing fantastic. It's light and it's warm enough here in Wisconsin to not wear a coat, so that always makes me excited. <laughs> uh, tell that to Texans about August is all I can tell you. Yeah, um, I actually I've been <laughs> I've been there in that time of year. Um, <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> yeah, it's hot. It's humid, and even women think, "Man, I wish I could shave my hair." Yeah, because, yeah. Because it is a nightmare trying to trying to look, trying to look pretty in Texas in August is hard. Yeah, so, which part of Texas are you in? Are you like I, I, I'm just outside of Houston. Just as like, yeah, Houston's particularly wet too, isn't it? Yeah, because we're, it, depending on what part of Houston you live in, you're anywhere from 30 miles to 75 miles from the coast. So yeah. Houston's huge too. I, used, I worked out there once for some a radiology practice and you could take hours to get from one, couple hours to get from one side to the other side. Maybe that's just the traffic, but it seemed like a no. giant city. No, it, it isn't just the traffic, although our traffic has gotten worse as more people are coming here from other places. But a recent survey of Houston found that from east to west, it's um, 75 miles across. And from north to south, it's 90 miles across. Yeah, it's like a really, really large city. It's right. Well, there's an old expression that only a poor man builds a second floor. And in Texas, we've always had plenty of land. So we yeah. spread out. Yeah, there you go. That makes sense. Um, so Maxwell, can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I am a totally blind gentleman. I technically have light perception, but I have no functional vision. So it makes conversations easier to start out there. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a family of carnival owners in Texas, and all I ever wanted to do was to also be in the business. I also learned fairly soon that I was uh, going to lose my vision. Uh, so that kind of affected some of it. My dad wanted me to go to college and get a degree and help the family business in some other way. Um, I enjoyed setting up, taking down rides and calling people up and booking events. So I did graduate from a traditional high school and college. I achieved the rank of Eagle Scout. I did a lot of things in spite of my vision loss. Um, I went off to a regular job for a few years and then came back to work for the carnival. I was uh, lucky enough to work with my dad and my brothers for about 15 years before his death would eventually cause the closure of our small carnival. And at that time, I knew I needed to find something else to do. So I felt like I had helped the family sell our surplus rides when we needed to, because in a small show, you can't buy anything newer unless you can sell something old. And mm -hmm. I thought, well, I'll try that. That could be a profession. But I had no idea how little I knew about running a business, selling equipment, or being online specifically, because this was in 2007 which for the most part was before WordPress, before Wi-Fi, and before Facebook. So, yeah. you know, I had to learn how to hand code HTML and recruit clients and set fees and manage social media eventually. So, so many things I had to learn. People were inspired by the fact that I uh, continued to take on these challenges and find solutions that, you know, I didn't just decide, well, it's too hard for me. I'm just going to sit here and take a check and watch, you know, sit on my couch, eat junk food and watch TV. So, I uh, continued to do that. People were impressed. They asked me to share more of my experiences as a blind entrepreneur. And that led to a second website as the blind blogger, a name that was given to me online because most of the people that met me online did not know any other blind people online. So I became the blind blogger. Uh, as a result, I've, uh, I was challenged to write a book about my experiences for an online summit. Uh, that's led to three books with a fourth one due out next month. I've been on over 200 podcasts. I've traveled the country solo. I sing in public. I do motivational speaking now where I share my story and the lessons people can take from it. And I host my own show called What's Your Excuse? Yeah, I was going to ask you, so what do you, do you sleep or, you know? Is <laughs> uh, you know, I get that question a lot. Usually it's from people on the amusement side of my business who are like, who, who get an email back from me at two o'clock in the morning. They're like, do you ever sleep? And I'm like, yes, I sleep. 
But if I know something is going on in a different time zone, sometimes I'll sleep then and maybe be awake when I should be asleep. But um, I don't do everything I just mentioned every day. Yeah, um, that's, fair. Some, that's fair. Some of those things only happen once a week. You know, like my podcast, I record an episode. I have a, a, a blog post will go out about that episode and I'll have the social media for that, for that podcast episode. That's once a week, you know. Yeah. Um, the amusement equipment arena is kind of dead right now because the hmm. industry has basically put the pause button on because of the pandemic. You know, they're kind of stuck in place and they're trying to hold on to what they have before they start the big sell-off that will result in people getting, you know, maybe 10 cents on the dollar for equipment they paid hundreds of thousands of dollars for. So there's really not much going on there right this minute. It's, yeah, I can uh, imagine that. Like right now it's, a lot of industries are sort of either paused and the results are kind of up in the air of what's going to happen post right right and with my books i generally write those as things are happening to me and then i send it off to an editor and she helps uh turn it from this big ball of tangled yarn that is a bunch of stories into an actual uh book that you know looks presentable on Amazon and the other places where people can buy can buy their ebooks or buy their print books. Yeah, I, I relate to that. I um I have three books that I've written and edited several times that are still sitting on my computer because <laughs> 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 like at some point there's like I'm like three edits in and I'm like I'm good. I don't. I don't All know. right. Okay. Well, you need to talk to my friend Lorraine Regulate at WordingWell.com and. I mentioned her because this is something I believe firmly in doing is if somebody has helped me along my journey and in some cases they've charged me full price. Sometimes it's been a uh, partial price. Sometimes they've given me installments when they shouldn't have. Sometimes it's just been out of the goodness of their heart. I feel like I have to show proper gratitude and mention these people when I get a natural opportunity to bring them up. So uh, for your book or for anybody that's watching this, that's been working on a book and they're stuck in that editing black hole of it's not good enough yet they should talk to Lorraine well all right well we'll make sure we plug Lorraine in the show notes so that other people who are interested in editing eventually ending will be good to know <laughs> and I'm like oh it's like three years on one book and I'm like, I like I don't even like the book anymore I literally oh, like, oh you're at that stage um yeah. Actually, Lorraine is an author as well, and she got to that stage last year with one of her books, and I said, stop calling it that damn book. Yeah. <laughs> uh, excuse me, but that's how she would refer to it in every one of her emails, and, I've, and, and you know, that's one of those things. The language we use about our projects, our passions, has a lot to do with our progress. I mean, if, yeah. if you're calling something that damn book or, you know, that blank, blank uh, uh, exercise machine or whatever it is, <laughs> You're not going to do it as 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 often or as easily. So, well, words are powerful, you know, right? I mean, that's clearly yes something that you, um, as a blogger, would have some knowledge of. It's, and book and multi-author of many books. It's awesome. So, quick question for you, because I actually have um, oddly, I started in the um, voice dictation space. I was a software developer for about twenty years before I did what I'm doing now. And so I, I was one of the very first people to use some of like the dragon speaking. Um, then I did some things with radiologists where we changed their dictation software with the, you know, the dragon engine in the back end. Uh, so I'm just curious, like, do you, do you utilize sort of a voice to text um, solution? And if so, do you mind sharing with us your favorite one? Okay. I do not use, um, dragon or one of the or the dictation feature on my on my laptop for my long form writing so if i'm writing a blog post or a chapter in a book i'm going to do that with actual with the actual keyboard okay but i love the dictation on the ipad the iphone where you know if you're sending somebody a text message or uh if you you know need to create an email i can do that but over maybe a paragraph or two, is Siri, uh, Google, Alexa, they just don't understand my Texas accent. So yeah. <laughs> I end up having to correct them. And so, you know, to, to then have to swipe my fingers over the screen, find the place that was a mistake and, and then fix that. And so the longer the, the longer the message, the more errors there are going to be, the longer it's going to take me to correct them. So if it's a 
if it's a short thing up to an email, I will definitely take the dictation option. And, but if it's, if it's longer, it just doesn't work for me. The one thing I have found that I love, and this sadly this is only available for Apple users, is a program called Mars Edit, which is an offline blog writing tool that allows you to create your blog posts as if they are text documents, but you can still uh, add your link text, add images, add video links, to add your, bullet, your bulleted text, your order list, all that stuff, your headings, you can do all that offline. This app makes it really, really simple with a screen reader, which is why I love it, and, and I've had it for like seven years now. And if you don't have great internet, you can do the work offline, have the document completely ready to, to publish, and when your internet improves or when you, you're back online again, you just press send and it goes up there to WordPress and it will appear just as if you had spent the time on the WordPress dashboard and gone through all the all the steps that you have to go through over there. And oh, so that's that, nice. That might that sounds like a great productivity tool overall. Oh yeah, yeah. And especially since I tend to write longer blog posts than average, um, I sometimes get teased about the fact that I don't think I've ever written a blog post less than less than a thousand words, maybe. Um, and I used to get teased about it more when I was doing more blog commenting to uh, drive traffic to my website, which I still love to comment on other people's blogs because, you know, people that they're already a fan of the blog owner and they see your comment. If they like your comment, then they'll come over to your website. And I've more than once I've been called a, a chatty catty, a chatty Kathy, excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like those long comments that, you know, share my actual thoughts make me memorable and result in more people wanting to get to know me through those. Well, yeah. And the other thing is um, it's supposed to be an exchange of information, right? A conversation. Like if we're in person, we'd never go, yep. Like nice. Like you'd, you'd great go, post. Oh. Yeah. Loved it. <laughs> great sentence. Keep it up. Maxwell, right. <laughs> you'd have a conversation. So um, and I'm a talker. So I, I clearly being on a podcast or be having a podcast might, might lead one yeah. to do that. But I'm um, shocked. I'm shocked that your podcast is only 20 minutes long, considering you say that you're a talker. Yeah, well, it's not my it's my show is to highlight others not to highlight me. So I make an effort. <laughs> I make an effort to not be like, let me tell you about what's great about me today. Well, even so, to, to corral a guest and force them into 20 minutes, that can't be easy because I'm sure if you're a talker, I'm sure you attract talkers. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Well, you know, I think it depends, though. Um, if if they run long, I don't cut them off or anything. I think we've gone, we've gone 30, 35, 40 minutes. Um, but after too long, people, t they weren't listening past the 25 minute mark anyway. So okay. either I'm just very uninteresting at that point or their attention span wanes. But um, other people really struggle to get 15, 10, 15 minutes worth of like content, um, which is surprising to me because, you know, everyone's interesting. Their stories are interesting. And you know, those people who do struggle with, uh, with not having enough content, but people who think, you know, I should, I could have a blog or a podcast. I think the flash briefings that uh, you can do through Alexa and Google, I think those are the perfect format for those people because you want to keep it under three minutes. And, you know, they may be, they may have great wisdom. They just may not be very verbose in expressing their wisdom. So yeah. they may be the perfect person to get in and out in two to three minutes and, you know, maybe, maybe change somebody's day completely from that just short to the point snippet. Yeah. A little positive motivational pieces. Yeah. I have a flash briefing that pops out through my podcast, but um, it's not well, it's not well used. <laughs> it's, it's get, there are a lot of things, a lot of info on there, but um, I'm, I'm not sure everyone's totally getting the whole idea yet. So, well, I, so I've speaking, been, I, go ahead. Yes. I've been told that with the flash briefing, you have to have a lot of content loaded up into it. And uh, so that, um, so that you really don't have to, uh, to create absolutely brand new content for it every day. But you know, you generally want to have at least 60 days worth of flash briefing briefings in there. So people get one every day. And yeah. those people who have been there a while will feel like they're getting something new because our attention spans aren't yeah. long enough anymore to remember stuff that we saw two months ago. Exactly. Yeah. I actually, mine is an RSS feed directly from my podcast and I do a wow. daily, daily show. So 
it goes, I've had, I think I'm at 126 in a row. Um, Monday, All right. Friday, fingers crossed, right? Yes. Yeah. So speaking of podcasts, what a great transition. Um, <laughs> I believe, Maxwell, that you have um, an interesting project that you're doing in that arena. Would you like to tell us a little bit about it? Sure. Sure. Thank you for that brilliant segue. Um, <laughs> I was like, cl clever, wasn't I? <laughs> yes, you did good. You did good. Much better than I would have done with it. Um, okay, so I've done lots of podcast interviews, and I firmly believe in their in the power they have to uh, get people's attention and, and bring them to find out more about me on my website. I also believe they're the most fun, energizing way to promote yourself. And a lot of people want to be on podcasts, but they've never done it, or they're not sure if they're doing it right. So I thought, you know, maybe I ought to create a program to, to teach people how to be that next uh, po next rock star podcast guest. And so I've got a thing I call eight weeks, which is at the blindblogger.net slash eight weeks with the number eight. And it's a combination of first, we get them clear on their story and, and start them thinking about telling their story more powerfully because mm -hmm. hosts don't book you, your product or your service, they book your story, or at least that's my experience. Yeah. Uh, you know, then we do some practice question and answer sessions that are videoed and, so they can look at them or listen to them later. Uh, then I have them on my show, What's Your Excuse? And then I book them on four podcasts and we do uh, preparation before each interview and then uh, a review after each show that they've been on so that they can uh, obviously get better every time they do an interview. And on, in addition to all of that, each time they're on a podcast, I'm also going to do the social media promotion. I'm going to co-promote their appearances along with the host and, of course, with them. Because as much as I really don't care for social media, uh, part of my gratitude for being on these podcasts and the opportunity to share my story with, with the people out there is I have to share the, sh the host's show and get as many people to come see it as possible. I love that. That's amazing. So we, I think we have similar missions. I started the Press Play Lifestyle podcast as an opportunity to um, allow other people to share their story. So that was literally the reason for it, because you never know what's going to resonate with others and how they're going to um, need someone to be supportive to help them show up for themselves. So it's been a, it's been really fun. I yep. do a lot of I get a lot of cancellations, though, because I do tend to attract some of the the younger, newer podcasters or new to podcasting, not necessarily age related. Um, so that's very, I, I love your program. I hope that people do follow um, the blindblogger.net slash eight weeks because I, I think that it's, they'll be a lot more comfortable after having um, gone through a few of them, right? Right, right. And a suggestion I would make to you, and it's something that I have uh, learned that's becoming more common, it's not quite best, best practices yet, but I'm noticing more and more hosts are only taking uh, guests from people who have already been on their show. They find that that way they're less likely to get another show. Mm -hmm. um, just, just throwing that out there because it's something I'm starting to see. And uh, I think that's one of the things that makes me really uh, well suited for this role is because I'm not just somebody who, who wants to get people on podcasts I'm somebody who's still using it in my, in my own marketing program. It's pretty much the, the first, second, and third things that I do to promote myself. So yeah. I think that helps the podcasters. And one thing I want to make sure that I, that I tell people is this. Every single one of you has a story. You may not understand the power of your story, but I hope and I pray that you will not wait until you think it's good enough to start sharing it with the rest of us because we all need those stories. Yeah. And not just in the time of a pandemic. We need those stories uh, every day because without each of us sharing our experiences, the lessons we've learned from those experiences, and lifting each other up, it's really, really hard to make it. Yeah, I agree. One of the things I, I share with my clients is um, if we don't talk about it, we keep bringing it about, right? Because Oh, I love that. Um, and when we've had a lot of really, really deep um, conversations on the podcast based on people sharing something that maybe they hadn't shared before. Um, but it, it does help to not feel alone, right? Like if there's a blind person out there who's low light vision, I was like, oh, I can't do anything. You can be like, well, what's your excuse? This, 
I, this is my business, right? This is what I do, yeah. right? Yeah. Your voice still works. What are you doing? Yeah. So I, I, yeah. I love that, that it can be an inspiration for others who maybe, if you don't see someone else do it, it's really hard to envision yourself being able to do it, you know? Yeah, it is. It is so true. And, you know, I really didn't start doing any of this till I was past 40. So for those of people who have perfect vision, but are thinking they're too old to start something new. I hope that, you know, I can, can help them as well. And, you know, uh, I've, I've had some really, I've had some pretty bad setbacks in my journey. I talk about traveling solo, but uh, two years ago in New York City, I ended up uh, sick, broke, and about five minutes away from being homeless before people in my online community came to my rescue and provided me money for a motel room and and helped with a train ticket for me to get back home to Houston, Texas. And, you know, I share that because I want people to know that I'm not perfect, that everything I've tried hasn't turned out the way I thought it was going to. And sometimes it's been, you know, just crazy off the chart bad. But, you know, I've managed to stay positive, ask for help, uh, pray and, and believe that something was going to come along. And usually it does. Um, and the, the, of course, after that particular experience for a while, just like everybody else out there for a while, I didn't take any risks. I stayed at home and, <laughs> and worked hard on my website and said, hey, if it ain't Houston, I ain't doing it. Yeah. But eventually I did get over it. And, you know, I, just before this uh, travel ban went into effect where, you know, nobody here in the U.S. or anywhere else is, is flying, um, I went to a conference in Florida and gave a great talk to podcasters about how they should overcome their obstacles and face their fears and just go ahead and start their podcast already. And it was a, it was a great talk. It was an amazing week uh, or weekend in Orlando, Florida, just before all of this stuff happened. And uh, so I'm doing my best to encourage people to, to not to let those excuses keep them from, from trying something. Uh, it doesn't matter how many times you have failed or not succeeded in the past. This is a perfect time to try something new. We're never going to get a more free opportunity in our lives to do something we've never done before than right now. At least that's my opinion. Yeah, I love that. I think it's, I think one thing that I love that you said, and there's a lot of great nuggets in there, but it's the idea that um, you don't just like come out of the gate and necessarily succeed wildly at this thing, right? Um, no. You, we're going to fail and expecting failure sometimes can be um, to, to, it can placate it a bit or make the pain not quite as bad when you realize that, you know, there, there is a learning curve to running your own business. There is a learning curve to being a podcaster, to being a blogger, to being a carnival ride salesman, right? There's, there's, <laughs> there's a learning curve. Oh there. yeah. Yeah. My, my learning curve included a, t included selling a quarter of a million dollar carousel four years ago and not getting my $25,000 commission for it because I didn't have a contract in place. That was my yeah. learning curve. Um, that's, a, that's a punch in the gut curve. Like that's Oh, crazy. yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's we were picking out a new car curve. That's that's how bad that was. But yeah. uh, but I learned a lesson from it. Um, I didn't I didn't do I didn't lift a finger for anybody without them signing an agreement from then on. Yeah. And and the great thing was, is since I, I since I stayed positive about it, um, I got new clients on that website. It drove a whole boatload of traffic to the website when I told people I had sold that ride and how quickly I had sold it. Uh, people started asking me to find them uh, items that were, you know, are really hard to locate because there aren't a lot of double-decker Italian carousels sitting out there around the world. So it, 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 while I missed the money, it really did help my business. It really did allow me to grow, uh, you know, both knowing – that you have to have contracts and you have to be a, you have to be an adult with these things. But just the fact that it put me, it put me on the map in a lot of people's eyes in the amusement industry. Yeah. And I think again, sometimes you, your mess becomes your message, right? Like you, oh, learned, yes. you learn so many things from all of the different challenges that you've had and you've been able to like bring that to others. So hopefully they learn from some of your missteps, but even if they don't, not do it they have someone that they can look up to that's found an, an opportunity or a way through the the mess that they were in right um, right so and maxwell if you were to give us uh some uh last minute advice or any tips for people 
as they're progressing either in their blogging or in their podcasting, whichever you prefer, what is the best advice you can give someone who's just starting out? I think the if I'm if I'm stuck having to choose one, which if you've looked you at my website both. at all, if, you, if I'm stuck choosing one, which you know is hard for me, I'm going to go with this. Uh, we are not intended to do anything important by ourselves, and in fact, to try to do it by ourselves is is not any fun. It's a whole lot more enjoyable if you bring people along on your journey. So this is what I would say: when you refuse to ask for help. You rob the other person of the joy that it would have received from helping you. And take the focus off of yourself. Don't think that if I can't do it all myself or don't know it all myself, I'm weak, inept, uh, I'm a failure. Put it on the other person. Think, hey, I wonder, I, they, I bet I would make their day if I asked them to share all this experience and knowledge that they have with somebody who really needs the help. And I'm telling you. Uh, you are, you're making their day worse by not asking yeah. because, you know, just the fact that they get an opportunity to help somebody that really can do nothing for them, but say, thank you is a great boost to your ego. And it really makes your day better. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Maxwell. I really appreciate it. Um, if people are looking to find out more information about you, um, you want them to go to the blindblogger.net anywhere else you'd like to reference so that they can find you online? Uh, the blindblogger.net is the place to go. That's where they'll find the blog posts about my podcast and the social media connections. Uh, I just want y'all to know that you don't have to want to hire me to reach out to me. Um, mm -hmm. I love meeting new people, making new friends, and just waiting to see where those new connections will take us both. So uh, the blindblogger.net or just ask at the blindblogger.net go to the email address don't even don't even waste time with the contact form and say hey max i saw you on press play and i think you were are amazing and i want to talk to you about x awesome i love it well thank you so much max well i appreciate you spending time with us today and i look forward to staying in touch since we're both in the podcasting arena i suspect we'll bump into each other again I think we will. And I appreciate it, Jackie. I've enjoyed myself and, uh, and I hope you have a good day. You too. Bye-bye.